Welcome to Paint a Palooza. This is our live video that happens sometime on Tuesday where we just paint lots of stuff. Today we're going to be live for about an hour, maybe an hour and 10. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and drop a link to the website. Caitlin is not at home right now, so I'm going to go ahead and monitor comments. Sometimes we're live like two or three hours, but we have business coaching today. So we're going to go ahead and get this done. We also had channel membership, which means we don't get to start painting Palooza as early because we do that video first. And we did paint some cool stuff that's pretty much done on that mirror that I got. I have to put the mirror back on it. This, I started painting this clock on Saturday's thrift hall. And we just, I, time got away from us on the thrift hall. I didn't realize it was so late when we got started. This is one coat of tarnished pearl. Let it dry. Haven't painted the bottom yet. Um, the, I'm just going to use this as my base coat and I'm going to work with some layers. We're going to go bright summery colors. I've got some queen bee here. I'm going to mix that with salt wash for a texture. We, since this is like kind of just a square box, it does have a little bit of bevel detail in here, but we want to add more texture. And this is just my piece that I, if you watch the thrift haul through the whole thing to the end from Saturday, this is the piece I started. I mixed paint blue and vintage linen and painted this piece. So I am just coming back and adding a paint inlay to it. I'm thinking, Zeb, do you think you could drill holes through this and put knobs on it so it could be like a coat rack? Um, or would that be too much weight on here? No, it could probably. Well, because it's yeah, only got a wire across the back, so I don't. Yeah, know. it's not really made. Like if you put that, if you attach that to a board and then put the knobs through uh, the board, seems like a lot. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just get this coat of paint on here. Um, I already have one coat down, but you want to have wet paint when you're doing inlays. This is cottage color, which has a built-in sealer. Um, and so it's a little bit different. I don't like to wait for it to dry all the way. I'm going to put this down. I used one sheet and I kind of cut it to match. It's not an exact match. I only had one sheet kind of left of this. I didn't have the whole thing. Need a little more. And so I just cut little pieces to match it all up here. So I'm just going to line that up. How's everyone doing today? Yeah. We we keep trying to break out a winter over here, but it snowed again last night. It was just a dusting. It didn't stick really. I was mostly melted when I woke up, but it did snow. Like all the benches and stuff have a nice new coat of snow. Uh, Brighton Ski Resort got like 10 inches overnight. They have got 783 inches of snow up on, there. On the year. They don't yeah, have it there. Uh, no, right now they only have about... A uh, fourteen foot base, but Harrington said this is the last weekend because it is getting warm enough in the day that it's starting to melt off, and they're having issues with avalanches up there. So you can't uh, can't be skiing when the, the snow's sliding off the mountain. All right, so I've got mine all on here on this wet paint. I'm going to use a damp rag. This is a paint inlay, so it's actually paint adhering to paint. I actually don't remember. I need to look up. Hold please. I'll look and see what. <laughs> This is called, if you guys are on Facebook and want to share this out, that would be a huge help for us. I can never remember the names of these paints. It's the Chateau. So let me look up the Chateau. I'll drop the link for it. It's a very pretty paint inlay. And you can use it on one large piece or break it up into little pieces. It doesn't have to all be used. I'm going to bring this up close so you guys can watch me put this on here with the blade. I didn't mix up too much. I don't know that I'm going to go for full coverage. I was actually, I didn't sleep well last night because I forgot to take my melatonin and ashwagandha and all that stuff. So I felt back asleep. So I was actually asleep for the snow, which I'm happy about. I only knew that it was snowing because Eliza came back inside and was like, dad, you haven't gone to milk buttercup yet. Uh, can you just take me to the bus stop because it's snowing? <laughs> All right, I'm just using a damp rag to activate this. I'll let it sit for a little bit. I'll get it wet again, and then um, I will pull it off. I will not wait for it to dry all the way because this paint has a built-in sealer, so it's not the same. So, I'm, with DIY paint. so I'm just working this around. I had some lines, and then I just kind of pulled them, I'm just building texture. I don't know if the camera will pick it up very well. Oh, yeah, you can see you can see the texture on there. So I'm probably not going to do much with the face. I might just hit it with some color. 
so that it's got some hints of the yellow on there. Because I'll go back over with tarnished pearl and then we'll bring that yellow through. Robin says, dumb question. No dumb question. She says, salt wash makes things look like stone. It kind of just looks like old plaster finishes, which was really common back in the day. They would mix paint and plaster. But it can also make it look like stone. It really depends on the color you're using. I'm just kind of air drying this. Oh, I was like, what are you swinging that for? I'm air drying it so I can get it wet again and pull the and lay off. Right, so, so this won't, sorry. No, I was I'm just going to say, I'm, not. I'm wearing my mic and you've been close to yours so they can probably hear you. <laughs> I'm loud. Okay, so this, I just I just want some of this yellow to come through. So just a little bit of yellow on the face of that. And if it's kind of dim, it's because it is overcast. We brightened us up as much as I thought would be good without blowing the, the footage out and really just changing all the colors. Oops. So, so this will look kind of old and crusty because I'm not letting it dry all the way. It's not the same as putting it in and letting it dry for 15 minutes. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, you're good. I was just going to say, I'm just, the, the nice part, you can put this on with a brush. You can brush it to get some really great brush stroke detail. Um, you can stipple it and make it like raised. I really love putting it on with a blade. I've been putting it on a lot with a blade, especially on flat surfaces, just because it, it looks like old plaster like Jamie was talking about. And this is going to look like old worn wallpaper because of the way I'm applying this. I'm not waiting for it to fully set up. Just getting on here a little bit, which is fine. That's what I wanted. I wanted to look old. I'll show so I said it. I wasn't going to go for full coverage, but here we are pretty much full coverage. This one actually really came across well, so I might have to let that dry and sand it a little bit. But I'm going to let this air dry, and then I'm going to come back and sand this and do a dark wax. And then I think I'm just going to leave it kind of like old salvage. What do you think? No, I like it like that. This queen bee is such a good, rich, mustardy color. Does the clock work? It does. It's actually already sold. Um, now, a lot of these things are, so we do a Saturday thrift haul. If you miss a Saturday night, you get to see a lot of the things get finished on Tuesday. We don't often have a lot of time to paint Saturday nights. It's getting late. People are going to bed and we don't stay on too much longer than an hour usually. Um, and we try to paint a little at the end, but sometimes the thrift hall or the conversation doesn't, doesn't lead to a lot of painting. So we, uh, we do these paint of paloozas now so that we can get the projects done. And so you can see what they look like finished. Cause a lot of the thrifting, the fun of that is like the, the whole start to <laughs> are you getting rain yet yes we have had some rain, some rain yeah. sorry about that guys um what was i gonna say oh somebody had a really good question they said is this chippy farmhouse still in style i seem to feel like people are moving towards true antiques so i'm gonna give you my spiel on it one if it is i guess we're out of a job because this is what we do but two i would say no i would say like the modern farmhouse where they have like this very clean sign that says farmhouse and pristine house with like weird things that are supposed to be farmhouse, but not really. That's kind of headed out. But like the true cottage, old world painted finishes, always in style. Like they've been in style for the 21 years that I've been married and married and I don't think they're leaving. And it's not just because I'm young that I love them because I know people 60s, 70s. We found a piece been... from the from the 50s that had probably been painted three or four times a little while back, and then we painted it. So. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like the cottage primitive vibes, always in style. Not everybody does it well. I mean, I guess that's probably not the nicest thing to say, but well, and even so, we we have shifted gears a little bit towards more like artistic style finishes. And also, now I'm not saying like blended bright colors, but like adding the texture and pulling the paint layers through. But even with our uh, 
our um, stencil designs and things. We're going more towards like old logos that you would actually find on some Less of these old primitive stencils, pieces. Yeah. Um, and with the rice paper, their actual art, we're going to, we're probably a few months out. It might be end of summer, a few months that far away. I don't want to make any promises. We'll see how the summer We're gonna goes. Make it, well, we will but have. We might be getting a bigger printer to do larger formats so that you guys can do your own big art. I'll buy you a bigger printer when my patio's done. Is that a deal? I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, fine. Um, we will have our stencils though for the holiday season done midsummer yeah and then shortly thereafter we'll have our decoupage paper released for that so i but guess yeah, it's so like we have seen a trend where like less like kitschy words and sayings more and curated. quotes and stuff and more things like art um and more primitive pieces that maybe you're not down to the raw wood but they are older like bones and older style yeah, I personally think French country and like the European cottage, cozy English cottage, always going to be in my book, always going to be in style. It does take some practice getting, figuring out how to put everything together, but I feel like we're getting better. I use it in my own home and I really like it. And I don't think our house is like cheesy. Most people come in and they can tell that we have done some traveling. So I try to do the same thing with the projects that we do kind of recreating that vibe. Well, so that was a really good question because we get it frequently. Um, Zeb, do you want to show I'm them what we worked on? I'm gonna pan them real quick and just show them this corner. It's oh mostly, gosh, it's a mess. It's mostly clean. -ish. Okay, grab my purse. We've been doing like a bazillion <laughs> things and running crazy there's a, and- There's a dryer ball on the mantle because the dogs were chewing. And going, to, and going to weddings out of state and you know, so we've been, we're, we're not caught up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that our life will ever get caught up at this point. But. No, that, but we like living this way. All right. It only so bothers I'm organized spin the camera people. just so you can kind of see the style we're talking about. Jamie's got her stuff on the shelf. We use that stuff on the shelf. We've got an old painting here that Debbie got us. Ignore um, what's in the window. That's you've literally got, just You've junk. got some stuff in the window. <laughs> that's that's canning jars for you milk. You've got some milk canning jars in the Allen Ranch I just used. But then here you go. We have an old chippy door. That's actually it, an original paint finish. We haven't painted that at all. And then an old window. And then the mantle's got these candelabra lights on them. Um, we did paint a candelabra as we painted those chippy uh, corbels. We've, and we've that's also Rex's basketer. dino. We got the dog's basket of uh, dinosaurs and toys so that they don't eat the fake wood logs in there. We made that coffee table. Um, this is an old original wood piece um, clock that, and that, that uh, sorry, that's a French clock. It's that, just missing the front. That window is making this really dim. Um, that has, uh, we picked that up in Round Top, but it's from France. Uh, the exposed, um open back chairs and and that style oh, the half-eaten dog rug yeah the, the dogs ate the rug you know just just some fun pieces those candlesticks are from france that are on the mantle so we try to have as many like authentic antiques in our shop as possible but the reality is not everybody can afford that so um we make stuff look good i know the coffee table i made we painted that you know <laughs> all kinds of stuff mixed in those corbels we painted on there the paint can you saw is original paint can from the french flea market in paris what colors are trending um well as we're moving into summer we're seeing a little bit brighter colors i always love a mustard and a mint um i just seasonally will change up what i do i want to bring in more navy so like in boho you're going to see navy and hot pink right but in french country you're going to see navy and mustard so i actually need to grab some hay sailor from the shop so that way i can grab that like update a few of my pieces with that what i like to do is look at my house look at a magazine picture pick out the colors that are missing grab those paint colors and paint a few accent pieces and put those in my house it's way less expensive than buying new pieces and then i intertwine that with like statement pieces like zeb showed you that clock I picked that up in Round Top for $500. It definitely cost me way more than that because I had to get to Round Top and back. But um, we got it back here and I love it. I mean, it, it looks great in here. I was thinking about selling it, but it's probably just something I'm going to keep. This little black dress, the lid got left off. It's gelatinous. I think that box is from the Target dollar spot. Maybe. What box? This one? Oh, could be. We got it at the thrift store for a buck. 
Yeah. Maybe it was two bucks. I can't Maybe. remember. I don't know. I like it because I think it's a great place to like put floral in and then you can put something in front of it. It's a good riser. So I want to, I'm going to try to cut as best I can. I uh, like the gold on here. I might update this brownish look, maybe with some more gold. Um, but I'm using little black dress on this chalkboard. I'm gonna, it needed some touch up. It was like scratched and had some like white spots coming through. It looks like it's been used quite a bit. Um, I'm not gonna seal this. We're just gonna touch it up. And then if someone wants to use it as a chalkboard, they can. But I would give it, if this, if this is getting mailed to your house, if you're, I think it's already sold, hasn't it? Mm, I don't know. If it yeah. hasn't, if it's getting mailed to your house, give it a couple weeks to really cure up. We're oh. going to still ship it out, but give the paint a couple weeks to cure up. When it dries, I'll put it, I'll season it. You're going to season I it? I just won't write anything on it. Okay. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I also do more chalkboards. So... Once you paint it, you can season it after it's all the way dry to give it that aged look, but then don't like write anything on it for a couple weeks. And sometimes you still have to repaint it if it's been on there for too long. It just happens. Well, and the reason being you want to try it like it'll, especially if you use like a liquid chalk or something, it'll hold that word. Robin says, what? One more question. What's the difference between milk paint and chalk paint? So chalk paint, which this is actually not chalk paint. This is clay paint. It has chalk properties, but it's way different. It's like thicker and don't tell the chalk paint people, but I think more awesome. In my opinion, not just because I sell it. I sell it because I love it. I don't love it because I sell it. But, um, and it's already pre-mixed. Milk paint is powder. You have to add water. If you apply it to something slick, it's gonna all chip off and you have to add bond. If you apply it to raw wood, it's not gonna chip at all. So it takes a little bit if of- If you heat gun it to try to get it to dry, it's probably gonna chip off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes a little practice to get used to, but you can get authentically chippy old finishes like Legit, I have pieces that furniture refinishers have come into my house and been like, no, you didn't paint that. I'm like, yeah, I painted it. It's not the original paint finish. So if you're patient and you're willing to put in the, the time to learn how to use milk paint properly, you can get old world finishes that are really not achieved any other way. And if you follow our videos, you will see us layer clay paint, milk paint, cottage colors, and get different finishes. And if you go to YouTube, because that's probably the easiest way right now, our, we don't have access to our Jamie Marie Vintage page. You can watch stuff on there, but we are not admins on it. Currently, we're working on that. Um, that's on Facebook. Yeah, YouTube that's on Facebook. Is fine. But on YouTube, if you go to YouTube, you go to Jamie Ray Vintage, look for the milk paint playlist. There's lots of really great videos in there. So, all right, I'm going to heat gun this, and then I think I'm going to do like a white wash situation. Um, Rodna says, I'm trying to figure out how to convince my husband that we need this 110 year old grandfather clock. We would <laughs> have to travel with it all the way up to North Florida to the middle of Indiana. I mean, we have a clock from that went. We just, from, that French one, we drove from Round Top, which is like a 20 hour drive from here. True story. So, Pulling I up. don't know how to convince him because I was in on the purchase. Jamie's like, I don't know, should we get it? It's more than we normally spend on stuff. I'm like, do you like it? Are you going to use it at our house? Just get it. So I'm an enabler. Zeb's an enabler. Um, I also have a um, Mora clock, which they sell for like around $10,000 here. It's actually not a Mora clock. It's a Norse clock, but most people would recognize it as a Mora. It's a Swedish clock, and it went from Sweden to – where did I get that? I think Somewhere you got it in from, the south. I think it was in Georgia, like an antique shop yeah, in Georgia. Yeah, at an antique shop. And then I had my shipper who ships my furniture for we me We didn't pick even it see it. Some, one of the people that – follows the channel saw it in an antique shop sent us the mess the picture jamie called the antique shop got him to buy it had it shipped out it took like two months to get it yeah and so it got shipped out here and now it's here in utah so you can go to uship.com and arrange shipments it's a little risky business the end whoever has it would have to be willing to wait for them to come pick it up and stuff but if there's something i really want i'll have it shipped I got a little bit of black where I didn't want it. Is Provo too far away from us? No, we do go there sometimes. We find that it doesn't have, sometimes the stuff isn't as good. It's a college town, so the thrift stores have college town stuff. But we did buy that old, uh, the bar that was made from old doors and a tin mm -hmm. top, and we just sold that. So 
I do go there from time to time. Typically, if I'm already in the area, then I'll stop by, but it's not like our weekly go-to. Okay. So I think I'm just going to leave this how it is for now. Let that dry. And then I once it's dry, I might touch up the gold and do maybe like a white wax around the outside. This is like a reddish brown. It's showing, it's playing like it's black, but it, it's like they tried to paint it like a cherry wood stain and it's not, I don't know. I'm not in love with it. I feel like the gold is good. Are you going to get rid of that? I'm not like getting rid of the gold. Sorry, I'm I wasn't listening. Gold. I was drying and reading comments. I'm going to set that aside to dry. I've got that drying. Do you want to show them your mirror? Yeah, I actually need to put the mirror in it. So, yeah, well, we did two pieces for channel membership today. We did a Gustavian sa salvage piece. So if you guys are channel members, either um, on YouTube or if you're JRV subscribers on Facebook, that's our paid group. Um, we did go live today and this just needs the mirror. Show right? this finish. The only thing that we did afterwards is I went ahead and got all the gold on there. I'll bring it close so you can appreciate the gold. I We've did a done little heavier gold finishes. Than We've done, yeah, she did. We've done similar finishes to this, but this is like an army green underneath and it has yellow underneath it too. And in some places it pops up and you can see that it comes through. Um, so to me, this is more of a French country cottage style finish. This is not like a Hobby Lobby farmhouse. It was black and looked like a tire before. We buy a lot of Hobby Lobby farmhouse style or um, what's that Tuscany style stuff from the thrift store and we repaint it. Yeah. Kathleen says beautiful. Yeah, Zeb did a really good job. Zeb, do you want, when he's done with that, I'll have him show you my salvage. I did a Gustavian finish on some salvage. So I'm going to, this was glue gunned in. So I think I'm just going to do that okay. again. I was going to tell you guys, we just put up a video yesterday where we went thrifting. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. It's an edited video. The Jamie um, and Zeb Ray vintage. we got to change that name. Yeah. Around. got to change, make it say Zeb and Jamie Ray vintage. Yeah, because then Jamie Ray Vinches is all together. But anyways, my point being that at the end of that video, we went to Ikea. And two things happened. I got some shade for buying furniture at Ikea, which you can give me shade all you want. I repurpose and save so many antiques. I feel zero guilt for buying Ikea furniture for my kids. My son has a small bedroom, and I needed very specific pieces where antique furniture would have been difficult to source to get exactly what I needed, especially the bed with the drawers I need. We could have gone months um, and not found the right piece. Yeah, exactly. And he, we talked about like the cottage and looking at floor plans that they have at Ikea because they have like little houses set up. And people were like, what cottage? So the cottage is our next renovation project. A lot of people are new here. So you might not know we completely renovated, gutted a hundred year old home and built a 2600 square foot addition. Um, we moved in just over two years ago. That's where we're sitting right now. This kitchen if you haven't seen those videos, it definitely doesn't look anything like what it did when um, we purchased this house. And then after that, we purchased our shop. 130 year old church next year, 130 years. 130 year old church. And behind, and we renovated that shop, which is still um, in progress, but we've now moved our store there and we're in the process of updating the properties, Zeb's doing the irrigation and stuff. But in the back, there's the old Bishop's storehouse where they used to store grain and stuff that they would share with people in need. And then at one point it was a Sunday school class, but it's been turned into like a cottage. My son lived there up until about a month ago and he moved to be closer to school. So we are completely gutting this cottage. I don't actually know the age. I know part of it is probably around hundred years old because it's been there for a while. And then half of it was added sometime in the thirties. Um, and we're going to gut that and turn it into an Airbnb. It's only, it's just under 600 square feet. What, 550? No, it's 502. 502 square feet. Yep. And that's going to be our next renovation. We'll project. just say a nice round 500. Yeah. So anyways, I was at Ikea because they have great floor plan ideas for small spaces. And I probably will source some things at Ikea that will help use the space better, but that cottage will likely be mostly antiques and found items just because that's our style. Um, and it's not really going to be a family cottage. It's probably going to be more set up for like couples, maybe couples with a small baby. Um, going to put a little washer and dryer in there. Yeah, because it's a very small unit. 
anyways, so that's what we're going to be doing. Right, I'm just waiting for the hot glue to heat up. It's coming. It's almost there. And then I'll put this in, and then we can show you the whole finished project. Have we used the DIY making powder? We have. The colors are a little bright for us. I typically, I like the Van Gogh. Um, and I have also used the, uh, what's that white dust, the decrepit dust? The decrepit dust, I like yeah. that. I actually thought about mixing some decrepit dust with the making powders because essentially it's the same thing and lightening up a few of those shades and seeing what I can do. But I haven't, I haven't quite perfected that yet. So Debbie says, I want to come stay there. It'll be fun. Yeah, I do have to clarify, it will not be open to pets because people have asked about that. We got um, our chickens got right our next chickens. door and they don't play well with uh, dogs. <laughs> and it's also like our place of business is in front and it's going to have a lot of like really precious things to me in there. I know it sounds silly to put that in Airbnb, but I just want to make it really special. So we're not going to do uh, animals in there, but there you go. Um, Clarissa says, I love Ikea. I just don't live close enough to the visit. The closest one is in Massachusetts and she lives in Emmy. Is that Maryland? Mm. Uh, Did I get the wrong? Is, or is Emmy Massachusetts and Emmy is Maine? Yeah. Yeah. That's sorry. Um, you can tell I'm a West Coast girl. I don't know these things. So Ikea is like four exits from our house. It's not far. Like, we discussed I, this. It's like five. Four, <laughs> one, two, four or five, whatever. It's not far. They've added extra exits, so I can't remember. I actually bought two of the similar boxes, so I had to go back and exchange it. And it took me like 45 minutes to get there and make the exchange and get home. So super close for us. Debbie says, I won't bring my pets, LOL. I didn't actually, I didn't, I don't remember that you had pets. You might've told me. I think you said you had dogs. But yeah, we, we just thought about it. I feel bad because I do have pets and sometimes I travel with them, but this just isn't gonna be a place for that. And we're such a small, like, situation we'll probably manage it ourselves and i don't want to deal with that <laughs> i there's a limit to what i can do i think we would love to have more airbnb so if this works out to be something fun for us then we'll buy some more and decorate them this one will be more of a renovation project than the others because if it's far away from us we can't do all the work ourselves so i'm just adding some glue in here to uh just fill in the gap and keep it from clanking around. This will especially help it keep from breaking um, in uh, like if we have to ship it. All right, I'm gonna do a, a whitewash next over the top of this and then I will set it to dry. Yeah, Ikea furniture, I, I actually have do, done antiques for my kids that's not their favorite. What happens is the eight-year-old is like, hey, I can't get this drawer unstuck because they forget that they got to open with both hands and not just crank it with one because the slides are not actually on rollers. It's wood sliding on wood. Yeah. Eliza and Odilia both have antiques in their room. I think Eliza actually is kind of over it. Yeah. So we'll see. But she is liking that new shabby chic is coming back. Like the, All the old... young kids, like the young, young kids are. <laughs> yeah, I just like saw. Like Odilia's favorite thing is to shop for Grandma. clothing at the thrift store. So um, what is that? Pottery Barn Teen. Just saw advertising the other day. And they had shabby chic, like the old Rachel Ashwell looking stuff. I was like, what? I love it. I mean, that's definitely my jam. But All right, one funny. project done. Nice. I'm just gonna whitewash this. I'm not gonna whitewash underneath. Do you all do you oil your wooden slides? Yes, we do. We've used Zeb actually has a video on how to make drawers slide better. Um, we use all kinds of different waxes. There's I have two used separate the Howard videos Sweden when you're looking for that. There's one that just covers how to help them slide better, and another one how to actually repair the slides. Oh yeah, repairing drawers. So on YouTube is the best place to search for. We have one for repair and how to make it slide better. Over oh, your salvage. I want more of that gray to come through, but I think I'm going to wet distress that. So some of you may remember, if you've been following us since we went to England last March, um, this piece of salvage would not fit in the suitcase, so I cut it in half. It's been repaired in the garage for a long time, just waiting for a paint job, and it got painted today. So it looks kind of just white, but in real life, it's very Gustavian. It's got a light blue-green base, 
with a gray wash and then a white wash in distress. I think it's hard to tell on camera. This might end up in the cottage. Yeah. Jimmy's but keeping I'm, this one for I'm herself. saving it. I have a lot of actual salvage that I had never parted with that you may or may not have seen that I'm going to probably use to add character. Zeb and I had a shabby chic. Do you guys remember Waverly Cottage Rose? That was our bedroom for 10 years. Was it 10? Mm -hmm. It was until we bought the king size bed. Oh. I got it for Mother's Day. I went to Target. We didn't have a ton of money. And I, do you want to paint that weathered wood? I was waiting for what you wanted to do with it. I can paint it and you can start something oh, else. There's I'm not a lot of weathered wood left. I can make that work for that. All right. I'm just drying this wash and then I'll wet distress it in a minute. We are running out of whites. We have greens and yellows and black on hand. Hey, Julianne. <laughs> she said, do you remember me from Tennessee and IOD training? I probably would if I could see a bigger picture of your face. It's like this big. Tennessee was how many? There was a lot of four, humidity. Four years ago? Five? Yeah, it was fun though. It says dust all over it from being in my garage. Craft kits are cut. They're done. They're getting packed and shipped up today and tomorrow. So watch for your craft kits if you ordered one. And we may have some extra once they're all shipped and we know that they haven't broken or gotten lost in the mail, which happens. Um, I will open up the leftover ones and add them the quantity in there. I'm going to do that. I've been not doing that. And then I wind up selling them later, super cheap, piecemealing them out as I find them. So I think this time, if we have leftovers, we'll just sell them for a regular price right away if people want them. That way you can find the video and everything. The screen is black. Oh, she must be behind when you, oh. when you unplugged. Let me double check on my end. My sound off. D Barb's on Facebook. Let me just double check. No, we're, we're good on there. So maybe if it's black, hop out and hop back in or try YouTube. So this is aviary straight up. I'm going to distress it back to the black pretty heavy. And then I'm going to whitewash it. And then I think I'm going to hit the details with gold. A lot of people have said green is coming back. I don't really feel like green ever left, but yeah, it is. Uh, aviary is definitely back in style. I personally think it came back a few years ago. We were a little bit ahead of the game on that. In fact, I picked that color before Joanna Gaines painted her cabinets that color. Just throwing that out there. Um, but aviary is a really great green. It's not avocado green, but it's in that family. And so it's pretty, pretty awesome. And it's beautiful as is. It's beautiful with dark wax, beautiful with white wax, clear. The statue is perfect. Oh, thank you. I love this, this statue. I was super excited to find it. Vicki says she would love it, but her purse is closed. I get that. We just bought the Ikea furniture and a new kitchen sink and our pool cover broke. <laughs> so totally understand. We're, we're having the pool cover fixed. When are they coming to fix that? Monday. We're on the, we're on the cancellation call list, but you know, I'm not going to hold my breath. Well, I'm glad it didn't break during winter because that would have been a nightmare because we keep our pool open all winter and we heat it, but the cover helps keep the heat in because so we just the, heat it at the night. The rope that closes it broke, so it's like hung halfway open in the back end. Yeah, so we use it for safety, but it also helps keep it clean and warm. Um, you have a beautiful green aqua painted dresser with round wooden knobs in your shop that I keep seeing behind your videos. Do you have a tutorial on the colors? Is it a buffet? Because if it's the chippy buffet, we do. Karen, I see you're asking that on Facebook. So that isn't on that Facebook page that you're on because we got hacked. But if you go to um, Jamie Facebook Ray Vintage page. on YouTube, yeah, but it's harder to find there. Go to Jamie Ray Vintage on YouTube and search for the chippy buffet. And I think that's the one you're talking about. We did do a video. There's not very many pieces of furniture that we haven't recorded. I'll try once I get this painted to see if I can find, and I'll drop you a link. Caitlin's not on here this morning, so I'll try to put a link. Surprising, the pool cover isn't under warranty, only for the first year. So it's a, we've had it two years already. Can you believe it? Yeah. Well, two years in like June. 
And apparently the ropes only last a couple of years and they break, especially if you use Well, and ours lot. gets used all year round. It doesn't get a break in the winter, so. And there is a delightful tree that we love, especially in the summer. It shades the whole pool, but it rains a lot of stuff onto and into the pool. So it's like extra cleaning. <laughs> and it might have uh, bound up those ropes a little bit with like leaves and all the stuff it drops. All right. I'm going to let that dry. Beethoven's going to roll over here. And then... Actually, I'll roll them back because I don't want them to make it so you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry, Beethoven. And I'll get something else to paint while that dries. But I'm going to look up that video for you. Okay. Oh, it is a buffet. All right, I'm going to see if I can find that for you, Karen. I'm usually... Just don't click us out of the video. Nope, I just changed the browser. There it is. Copy link. All right, Karen, I'm guessing this one is it. It surprisingly didn't get a ton of views, but let me know if that is the one you're talking about. That's what I believe. What color is Zeb using? Aviary, this Leslie. Is, yeah, this is aviary. Missy has a good question. Now, this is for Zeb. Any advice on getting my husband to want to paint with me? Why do you paint with me? This is my full-time job, number one. Um, but I, I have a lot of, uh, I like art and fixing things. And, you know, I, uh, I went to school for graphic design and that just falls right into this. So I'm kind of predispositioned to it when I'm not running sprinklers or building houses. I, this is what I love to do. Um, what I tell most wives that used to come to markets and be like, Hey, how do I get my husband to be into this? Like you're into it. You got to show him the money first. Yeah. It's gotta be worth it. Like how if he fixes I that, it's going to give you guys this extra money so you can take that trip, you know, that sort of thing. You get six months into that and he's just doing it full time with you and fixing all the things every night. So Zeb's about <laughs> eight years, right? Is it today? Is it? No, it was yesterday. Oh, eight, eight years, years yesterday, yesterday. We have been doing this together full time as our household income. But before that, for about three years and many years before that intermittently, but I was painting fairly regularly three years before that. And he helped me when he could, um, but I did, like, I took care of the kids. I actually had a work from home job and I would roll furniture end over end to get into the house and paint it. And then I'd sell, sell it from the inside of the house and hope that Zeb was home to help move it out. And he would help with like big projects or um, if I had a repair and he had time or if we had a market coming up, but otherwise I did it all myself. And I think he really wasn't sold on it for a while, but when he was ready to leave his corporate tire sales job. He was sure happy for all the junk I'd painted all the years. Yeah. And I was happy that he wanted to paint with me. So it's worked out well. But yeah, most guys are willing to try something out if there's something in it for them. Or, you know, maybe he's the kind of guy that sees you struggling and he wants to help you. I don't know. I don't know him. I'd have to meet him and then I could tell you. <laughs> and Zeb is crafty. Like he's taken art classes and stuff so he does yeah, like I've, I've taken art classes all the way up through the college level so this is uh this is my jam all right i'm putting stuff back here that needs to be sand or that has to be primed or fixed because i don't want to deal with that right now what needs fixed we had stuff that needs fixed oh those ducks the yeah duck. we gotta do some major repair on that leg because we only have about 30 more minutes so I'm going to get going. Oh, this needs to be primed because it's shiny. But yeah, back in the day before I was doing this full time, if Jamie was like, hey, if you help me fix this, we're going to be able to afford to get you that Milwaukee drill you've been wanting. <laughs> yeah. Or we're going to be. Let's we're fix gonna, that right now. We're going to be able to afford the water bill. Yeah. Or yeah, we'll be able to pay the water bill or this is going to cover football fees, you know. <laughs> or dance. Or dance. Dance and football. Dance recitals. You know what I got here, Zeb? I got a fresh tub of apothecary. So I think I'm going to use that on a few things. This one, 
this one, this one. I don't think I want to paint this French millinery. What color should I paint this? Can I do French millinery in this? What are you gonna you gonna bring that gold through? It's got kind of like a white plaster situation with yeah. the gold on top. I think I can. The cool thing about this is it's wood. It's actually wood that was turned and then they painted it. And we got off some wax that was on there. Would you mind opening that when you're done? With what opening you're what? This one? Yeah. Yeah, I think I can get it. I don't want to use a big brush for French millinery because I'm just painting the one thing. Let's see if I got a smaller brush. So somebody asked about brushes. We've been using Klingons. And then we also have Debbie's brushes that I like to use for the DIY paint. I need to go grab a few more of those. Debbie's brushes are new, so we just don't have as many of them in our repertoire, but we've been using Klingons for a lot of years. So we have a lot. I might have to get something else for that one. All right, I'm not going to worry about full coverage. I'm going to paint this French millinery, wet distress it, and then maybe white wax it. And I want that gold to peek through. Mine's a builder and he can paint. And I think if he gets something out of it, that it might, that it might work. Yeah, it's fun. I do have to say, you have to be prepared for like, you know, they say if you painted it, it will come. Not necessarily. Like when Zeb quit his job, I had already been doing it and built a name in the area for like three years. And then we've been working since then to continue to grow our business another eight years. And it's turned into something that's been great for our family, but it took a little bit of patience when we first started he built farm tables yeah, so i was building a farm table a week and i painted custom work that's how we made it I, we weren't making any money on youtube we didn't really have a website to speak of yeah i'm glad i went with french millinery that's pretty okay i'm gonna let those dry i think i'm gonna heat gun so i can get this clock finished because we got about 20 minutes here and then we got to eat a snack and do business coaching Green is dark, Linda. What if it's just on Facebook? Hold on. Or they're just, they could just be behind. No. Let me double check. So when you heat gun this, like, like I've got yes. it set up here, where'd you go? Do you have both? Maybe the camera's dark. You have both heat. Yeah, it's overcast. Yeah, it's overcast today. We have all the lights on. Both heat guns over here. I've got my corbels bought for. I thought they would have flaws, but they are perfect. Well, they have slight flaws, but you probably didn't notice them. <laughs> so I the should disclaim, ones. like, when I send something out, like, if I say it's broken, it's, it's like, pretty broken. I try to... No, but you said there weren't flaws. Well, like, little flaws to me are... There were imperfections. Might as well be, you know, And not all flaws. of them had it. There were just a couple. But she got the ones that we were getting rid of from the past craft kits. Oh, black screen still on facebook that is so weird is maybe when you went out you didn't hit live again on facebook no it's it's got a check mark i'm gonna double check we'll see if not we're on youtube guys hop on over and come find us nope i'm looking right now on. so they're just behind tell them to fast forward a little yeah if you're on facebook fast forward Okay, Linda we did have a fine. moment where Jamie like cut the screen out. Oh, that's probably what it is. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to paint. I just like to check because I don't like to leave people in the dark. All right, so when you heat gun the salt wash, it will crackle it, which I will, is cool. I will paint the bottom of this. I'm painting a pop carry. Also, if you guys, we've been on for a while, so I might not have dropped the link. Um, but jamierayvintage.com. Yeah, I know the screen is a little bit dark just because it is cloudy. It's overcast out there and it's making the camera do weird things. It's like trying to not be too bright and trying to adjust to the dim lighting. And it's one of the things. It's not perfect. All right, I'm gonna let that dry, keep going. Jamie in the dark, Diane, Diane. She's D Barb on Facebook. I'm gonna drop a link to the website again, just if there's new people here. In case you need some apothecary or aviary in your life. <laughs> oh, you went French millinery on that. Are you going to bring that gold back candlestick? through? I had a whole conversation about it. I missed it. It's okay. I don't always listen to you. <laughs> Sometimes I get busy on my project. It um, happens. 
yeah, so I did French millinery, but I didn't want to do French millinery on all this. I just want it on the candlestick because I want the gold to come through. Candlestick is blocking Zeb's paint. The purple one? I'm just heat gunning. There you go. I'm going to do a wash on this. I might do full coverage white on it first. We will see. I have a white thumbprint on Beethoven. That's okay. He's going to get a second coat. What happens when you move it? Oh, I see it right there. That's funny. As soon as I get done with this apothecary, I'll go touch that up. I don't know why I have this all the way over there. I'll go do that. What color complements Sweet Pickens Lantern? Is Lantern black? Right? Yeah, lantern's like a dark. It's like a, it's a pretty Anything? dark black. Yeah. Anything that goes with black, I don't know. What are you trying to? I use it usually as a base coat. But um, I mean, I know this sounds too, like obvious, but white, like we just did that piece in black and white. I love a monochromatic piece. That's funny. Linda says I even asked you if the French millinery was good for the candlestick, and you said yes. Zeb's had a migraine for like three days. So that could be it. That's funny because sometimes I will say, I told you that. And he'll be like, no, you didn't. But Never. the people you of YouTube, they know. <laughs> the people of YouTube, they know. We got proof in the video. It's on, it's been recorded. Yeah. Jana says, hi, from, hey, from Texas, just did my first transfer. Which transfer did you use? I can never Transfers remember. Transfers are fun. Yeah, they're fun. They're a great way to upcycle fast. I put this on pretty thick in a couple spots. It's taken a hot minute. Well, the good thing is when you put it on <laughs> thick, then it like uh, crackles. All right, I'm just painting the underside of this, even though you probably won't be able to see it most of the time. Yeah, but it's up, it's raised up, so you will see it. And then I'll flip it over. I got the paint too hot, I bubbled it. Roses. Oh, yes, the red roses. The the Redow. I like that transfer. Or did you do the pink ones? I can't remember what that one's called. There's Flora Parisiensis. Parisiensis. Those the pink petal flowers, yeah. Those ones, Debbie says, I love my rooster mold on my jar lid. Yeah, Debbie sent me a picture on Instagram, she's been DIY and some stuff. Janice says, Pink, that's fun. I love pink flowers. I'm telling you, shabby chic's coming back, <clears throat> and for some people, it never left, including me. I worry less about fads and stuff and do more about what I like. I don't have time to constantly redecorate my house. I'm not, I'm definitely want, not one of those influencers that changes her living room up 8,000 times. Like we've been here two years and I've changed a few things, but, oh, we did swap the couch for the chair. That's about it. Still as, torn on that. <laughs> you're still not sure if you like it. All right. So this is the original base coat and I'm just going to come real quick so that my wash has something to hang on to. Besides yellow, I don't want I don't want it to necessarily blend with the yellow when I wash it. Well, also the base coat on the face of that is pretty streaky. Yeah. So yeah, it needs another coat. I am almost out of this tarnished pearl though, so we're gonna have to use it sparingly. We have more at the shop, but just none here. I love this cake plate because it's already textured. So it does like, oh, saved me like a ton of steps. Diane Victorian Shabby says, I'm still Victorian and Shabby. I wouldn't expect anything else from you, Deep Barb. Diane. 
All right. Um, Vicky says, I finished my cabinet. I love it. I'm selling it though. We think it's a federal piece and a jelly cabinet. Oh, I love jelly. Jana says, Tucson old world here. Is that the kind of finishes you like? Is Tucson like Southwest old world? Is that? I've never heard of, I've never thought about it, but I have been to Tucson. So I think I kind of know what you're talking about. Like the big chunky, bright kind of Mexican colored old world finishes. Oh, Sue says she got a cake plate like this at Magnolia. Nice. Magnolia, um, they get a lot of their stuff from like China wholesale. So that's probably the same as this because this is, I'm guessing this is probably from like Hobby Lobby. I did hear though that she finally started putting some of her antiques because she is a hoarder kind of like me. Damn, only on she's got scale. warehouse after warehouse after warehouse. And when I say warehouse, like we're talking like hundreds of thousands of square so, feet of inventory from what it looks like when they're filming and they go through those huge old buildings and it's just like stacked with stuff. I like, would love to see Joe's um, antique collection. Oh, Tuscan Italy, Janice says. Not Tucson. I must have read that wrong. And maybe this did come from Magnolia. Lots of people make the trip out there. I, we've only been there once, and it's been since Jack was a baby. I want to go see all their little shops. I think that would be fun. It's just hard to find the time. We didn't even make it. I wanted, we didn't make it out to England or France this spring and we've sold almost everything from last fall. I did find the horse brass in the garage when I was cleaning stuff out. So I'm going to get that listed in the evenings this week. Hopefully we'll have some of those for the Thursday live stream. That'll be fun. If my sister can come this fall, we'll try to make another trip out to England, um, maybe visit some new we'll places. We'll probably and... figure it out either way. We just have to get someone else. Yeah. It's just we have a lot of animals, and she's good with animals, so. We're going to show Eliza how to milk Buttercup so she can milk her while we're in Hawaii. She's hesitant because, butter. I mean, she's a 700-pound cow. She's nervous to handle her. Like, you just got to take charge and let her know that you're the boss and she won't give you any fits. She's a sweetheart. But if you don't let her know you're in charge, then she's going to be in charge. <laughs> oh, Janice wants to know the sizes we're using today. So oh, um, this one is an R20. Yeah, you, I got an F30. F30 and then this is the FA40. And this one is so old, I'm not sure. I, I think that's a, I think it that's says also 30 a, on it. That's an F30 as well, but it's all blown out. <laughs> I also really love the PS brushes. I don't have one. I use mine for wax, the pointy sister, um, cuz they're good for detail. So hopefully that helps you. Okay. All right, so you can kind of see got some of that crackle texture just kind of dry brushing over that not full coverage not not quite a dry brush let us see that and we'll I'll clean up the face when we're all done i was going to take the clock out but it uh it wasn't going to be a thing it That's was fun. pretty glued in it's 104 so we have about 10 minutes to bring it home this here is tarnished pearl to get this kind of grayish, taupey, white look. Depends on the lighting you see it in. So what is your plans after this? Are you gonna I wax thought, it? I was actually gonna do... I think you should let that dry all the way, all the way. What do you think about a dark wash? I was gonna do a white wash, but what about like a weathered wood wash to sit down in all these cracks? So if it were me, I would let it dry all the way, all the way. It's Lightly dry. distress the edges. No, there's still... Uh, it's mostly dry. Lightly yeah. distress the edges, and I would do clear and dark wax. Only because it's a clock, and like you don't want water yeah, down in there. That's a good call. That's just my, in my humble opinion. Okay. Right in the bottom of this. When it's all said and done, I'll come through and do like a tarnished pearl on the bottom. 
I find teacups and saucers are made in English dumps. Which are the ones to purchase? I'm actually not really a teacup expert. I purchase anything that I like the way it looks. <laughs> so um, I, if you're really worried about like what sells best, you can go on Etsy. You can go eBay too, but Etsy is more my jam. Go on Etsy, look up teacups, find the ones that you like, and then make note of what the maker's marks are. You can, if they're not, if the pictures aren't good enough, if you find ones that you like, you can look up the name and Google the maker's marks and then keep pictures of them so you know what to look for. But honestly, I feel like when you do that, it kind of limits what you can find and you may miss out on something really great that you just weren't anticipating. So I would say if you like the design and the price is right, I would buy it. It really doesn't matter which maker it is. Because I'm, I mean, I guess we're kind of antique dealers, but I'm, I'm more we're, into the look. We're more home decor dealers. Yeah. I happen <laughs> from to. From all the eras. I happen to have antiques, but that's just because I really like the way they look. Oh, the pointy sister is sold out. Janice, may, if you click notify me when back in stock, then you'll get an email when they come back. If they come back in stock, I definitely would get one for sure. I put decoupage paper on the front of some drawers and the edges unravel a little when I sanded it. Suggestions on how to finish them? Um, I just like to go with a little brush around the edges and lay more decoupage medium around the edges because you are removing some of the medium when you sand it. So make sure you go back and just touch those edges up with the decoupage. Like if you're using liquid patina, just go around the edges, brush one over the top, and then let it dry. Okay. That's drying the rest of the way. I think I'm gonna work on this next. I'm gonna dry it and then I'm gonna wet distress it. And I'm gonna hopefully bring all these projects. Beethoven needs another coat, so he likely won't get finished in this live video, but I think I can work on the rest of these. Sorry, my um, heat gun is dying in case anybody is wondering. I thought that I threw away this one, but maybe the old, the other <laughs> I ones. I think you threw away the other good working one. I don't know. I'm going to keep whacking it until it doesn't no more heat work guns. anymore. I'm going to get every last heat gun out of it I can. Okay, that's dry. Ruru says, she's talking about milk paint. She says, I also order tickle pink, purple posies, and butter. I can't wait to use them. I have a small table top roll top desk. I want to use the pink on with green under. Oh, that's fun. One of my tricks, if you don't want to distress a ton, is to just put the color for the base coat around the edges and then seal that. Let it dry completely. Then do the color on top and wet distress just on the edges, and it'll wet distress back to the sealer. And then you don't waste as much paint. But if you want like a layered where it's chippy all over and lots of it coming through, then you can do it with the whole coat. All right, so I'm just using water to pull back the cast iron of my candlestick. And this is gonna wet distress it. I'm not gonna seal it on camera because we have kind of running out of time, but I'll probably come back and either wax it or I might come back with just like a liquid top coat kind of kind of depends on my mood. All right, clear wax. I don't want, I'm gonna dark wax on this, but I don't want the dark wax to take over. So clear wax first. Okay, there that is. Let's heat gun something else and dry it. You're welcome, man. She says, great tip. That's why these live videos are kind of fun because as I think of things, I share them with you. Did you guys watch the video from last Friday where I shared the tip on how to paint black furniture? It's a good one. And it's one that I've talked about in live videos, but not everybody here. So a lot of people were like, oh, I didn't know that. We don't even have the dark wax out. What? That looks good just as is. Did you clear wax it? Is that what yeah, you did? it's clear wax. I'm going to do the dark wax because I really want it to sit in that crackle. You don't have to heat gun your paint, guys. I'm just heat gunning it because we're in a time crunch. So I haven't wiped the wax off. It's not cured, the clear wax. And I'm just going to... And then we'll wipe it all off together. 
Oh, yeah, that's really what I wanted. That's good. Anne says, I washed them all and soaked them up like a sponge. Thanks for watching our videos. It means a lot to us. Somebody the other day messaged me and said, I'm, I can't find your video because I normally put it out like Wednesday afternoon. Or sorry, Monday, Monday afternoon. afternoon yeah. Sorry, my brain doesn't work. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I haven't got it done yet. She's like, oh, sorry for bugging you. I'm like, actually, like the fact that you're sitting there waiting for my video to come out means a lot to me. So thank you. Well, maybe she wasn't waiting. Maybe she listens to it on her drive home. Yeah, but <laughs> she, she was looking for the video. You know, she knew yeah. that there should be one and she messaged me to find out. Because I'm trying to... Well, especially with our Facebook page getting hacked. Like, yep. who knows what happened, right? I actually have a message on my Facebook account right now. Of, I can get... I see notifications for Jamie Ray Vintage. I cannot log in. And it says, I'm trying to order on your website and I need help. And the other day I found one. Where did you guys go? I can't find you. And it's so infuriating that I can't get to my customers. Hopefully Facebook figures it out. All right. So I just wet and distressed this. And once it dries all the way, this I might white wax. So I think that would be pretty. Mm, this is this might be a new favorite combo. The yellow with the tarnished pearl and the dark wax is good. It will lighten up quite a bit when the wax um, cures, but it's always going to be kind of a dirty, crackly finish. Shelly's Shelley's on here. She says she wishes Meta would get to fixing it. I know, Shelly. I need to text you updates. I got an email that said, you should have access to it. I'm like, I promise you, I don't. And so I sent them screenshots. Like, here's the notifications. I click them and nothing happens. I log into the business page. It tells me I don't have any pages attached to my personal page. I have every single, I have access to every single other page back except for that page. I have access to my subscriber group. I'm like, seriously? They showed us how much we're getting paid from ad revenue. Yeah, I got an email <laughs> for the ad revenue that did not show up in my PayPal account. And we did receive an email back saying that they had it on hold because they were like verifying the account. So I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that we can get our ad revenue eventually, but it's so frustrating. And it's just a huge waste of time. Like I literally spend probably 10, 15, 20 minutes a day trying to get through to them. I feel like it's more the emotional. Yes, it's exhausting. Okay, so I wanted more off than came off, so I'm back with the clear wax over the top. This must have had some sort of wax on it because when I heat gun the sides, it like melted the wax. That's weird. Dee says, Jamie, I took your advice from Saturday night on how to paint my paper mache dough bowl. It looks amazing. So thank you for that. Awesome, Dee. If you are in the Jamie Ray Vintage group, would you share that picture in the group and tag me? Because I want to see it. Shelly, I'll try to text you after business coaching today because I might need you to be a thorn in their side because it's I'm about done with Facebook. And honestly, I wouldn't care except for it just feels like they're stealing from me. Like there's money that they owe me and there's customers and followers that don't know where we went. And we we're pretty regular posters. So they probably are like, what the heck happened to these people? How long does wax take to cure? It could take up to 30 days. I mean, we're not going to wait 30 days to ship this. No. We'll ship it to tomorrow. Um, but to cure completely about 30 days. If you leave it on there thick and live somewhere humid, it can take longer. All right, I'm almost ready for the close up, guys. I'm coming. And I'm just heat gunning this so I can wet distress. I could probably wet distress when it's still a little damp, but I don't want all the paint to come off. So I'm going to dry it. And if you wait like and try to wet distress it a week later with the DIY paint, you can. You just have to be more patient, get it wet, and let it soften a little to wet distress it because it'll dry pretty hard. Oh, man. I want to do a whole dresser in this finish. Well, All crusty. You know what? Get, your, like get your landscaping done and you can be Friday's video. Uh, don't you know I've got a landscaping business going right now? 
I started it on the side while you were painting furniture. I was painting furniture and you're doing irrigation. All right, I'm just wet distressing this to bring this back. Do we have white wax out, Zeb? Anyway, that's that's I said that's a great color combo. Look at the texture from the from the blade and then heat gunning it. I just like the, I think the yellow is nice because it really comes through in contrast. And then you have like the dark undertones that they got distressed back in a few places. Zeb's going primitive. He sure is. I've been doing a ton of primitive finishes. I really love them. When we're in Europe, they're my favorite thing. You find these old pieces that are like probably one of my, I took like 20 pictures of it. It was, we were in a shop and they had an old table that looked like it was built out of barn wood from who knows when. And then at one point, one of the legs had broken and they took some tin. It almost looked like they cut up like a tin can and they made like an angle iron type piece out of it. And they nailed that back together. And that was holding that whole leg together. <clears throat> And they just were using it like that. And I loved it so much. Did you get off with the sandpaper? Um, I don't know that. Oh, it's right there. I wanted to. I, thought that I need the 220. It was with. They were together. They were friends together. All right. So I'm going to lightly sand this because it's not sealed. I want to show this. I don't think they can see what you're doing. All right. So this is that piece that we did. Oh, I can't. You know, the... You're on the wrong side. Sorry. <laughs> this is a piece I did in the beginning to look like old salvage. I think it turned out pretty good. I'm going to distress this edge and then I will do half sealer, half water and set this and then maybe dark wax. But yeah, that was just like a very kind of plain square box clock. Um, and I feel like it's it's quite a bit. We, we took it upscale even with the old world finish. They said your texture is yummy. Upcycle by Brie does a lot of primitive. Yeah, she does a lot of primitive, a lot of industrial. I like more cottagey, but I like the mix of cottage and primitive together. Zeb probably would like more industrial. Like it's kind of a yes and no. I love the bench, the table behind our uh, sales counter with the big piece of metal on there. Oh yeah, that one's definitely industrial. At some point, like you just want to be comfy and not have to worry about snagging your clothes on stuff and banging into things. <laughs> so that's where the cozy cottage comes into play. Mm -hmm. So I, this is that piece I started in the beginning and I did the wash and I'm just bringing that weathered wood back. And then all I have to do is just um, wax it. But I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to bring it up close. So this was, somebody said they thought this was from the Target dollar spot, but see all that texture this brought through? It had kind of a rough finish on the wood, like they didn't sand it all the way, which is perfect because when you layer it like this, now to me, this kind of looks like an old piece of beadboard or something. You could put some plants in here and I'm going to leave like the drippy, chippy finish inside. I'll do some clear wax and it'll be good to go. Oh, that's cool. You're doing a big I'm distress. I'm going heavy distress on this and then I'm going to go gold. Around Ooh, all the uh, like gold, spicy. black, and green. That's the good stuff right there. All right. This, I think I want to do a, I think I'm going to wait and do a liquid top coat on this just because I don't know what they're going to use it for, but I'm going to do white wax on this. Just so you know, it is 120 almost. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Business coaching is at 130. Anna says a little bit of everything is what us Swedes would call legum. It's probably like eclectic. Okay, what color is the blue that you did with salt wash? There's no blue with salt wash here today. This is apothecary. It just had a textured base underneath it. The salt wash Zeb did was with Queen Bee. So it looked kind of blue when it was just tarnished pearl over the top of the yellow. It did take on kind of like a blue tone. So you don't have white wax over there, you sure? Yeah, I don't have white wax over here. There's a whole tub of it that's new over there. It's like almost new. That You got the wrong tub. Okay, very heavy to stress on that. Um, <clears throat> mm, I'm not seeing. Yeah, it's in with the waxes. I have white. Let me let me wax. heat gun one of these and see while she's looking. See if we can get some gold on this. Uh oh, gotta fix the camera first. 
We can't have the black bars. That's always the thumbnail that Facebook's like, hey, use this one. I have white beeswax. I don't know where the other wax is. This will work. Jamie. What? Right here. Oh, that was not with the wax. It was in front of the wax. Oh, well, that's all right. I got beeswax it's beeswax. Out. It works. It's fine. It's good. This it takes a little The beeswax takes a little longer to cure. And it's not, I feel it like it's not as white. Good. Yeah, it does smell pretty delicious. It's not as intense white, I feel like. I'm gonna let this sit on here and then I'll buff it off. So the beeswax, at least to me, is not as intense as the DIY wax. So it doesn't like get all solid white and it does take longer to dry up. But I'll bring this up closer so you guys can see it on top of this apothecary. I mean, if you've been here for any length of time, y'all have seen apothecary and white wax. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It's like our go-to finish for six of the eight but years this of business. Was originally from the family dollar, okay? And it was older. We got it. We actually paid, I think, only 50 cents less than what the family dollar charged many years ago. But I love the embossed fabric on here. One of them has embossed leather. It's still got the velvet inside. I will wipe off the excess wax there. But I think it turned out pretty cute. And you couldn't really see all that floral before. It was like lost. What is the name of the green color paint you just painted the boxes? It's Apothecary, Karen. So if you go to jamierayvintage.com, I will drop the link just to all the DIY paint. Um, and it's Apothecary is the color. Let me drop a link to the paint. Sally's about to shovel five tons of gravel. Ooh. Sally, my that back is already me, hurting for you. That reminds me when we put the French drain in on the addition. But you know what? With all the moisture we've had this year, I am glad for that French drain. I remember you were cursing it. And I'm like, it was like we'll like it if we ever get a lot of snow. 15 tons of gravel. That was a situation. Now we have a tractor. We did not but the to. tractor probably couldn't have gotten back where we no, needed it. No, that's true. Yeah. But still, could have moved it closer. All right, I'm hurrying. We gotta go live in seven minutes on well, another we, channel. We already did our outline for business coaching. Yeah. It's gonna be a good one. Okay, but those set up. I don't, I'm so torn on this. I think I'm just gonna do clear on that. I'll just white wax this one. Okay, so I clear wax this to kind of brighten those colors back up. They will dull down a little bit. They won't stay this bright and dark and wet looking. The wax has kind of a flat finish unless you buff it to a high sheen. Um, oh, can you do that purple candlestick? But I got, um, no, I got to do gold. Oh, you're going to do gold. Never mind. I can There's do that. There's no That's time. <laughs> There's no time. No time. It's all right. I'm going to do a little white wax just around. The edge of this and I'll come back and clear wax this one. Brush. That's the one I want. Ta-da! I'm going to be more accurate than that. You have two minutes. I love how we always say we're going to end like 10 minutes early and then we never do. No lunch for you. Well, I had some granola that was not good. I tried a new kind of keto granola and I had two eggs, so I'm all right. Good night, Anna. She's in Sweden. She's off to bed. Amy says, what live? I never knew it could be like this. What live? <laughs> what, like what, Amy? All right. I'm going to wet distress this. It might transfer a little bit of the apothecary on there, which I'm fine. Actually got a little bit of that on the top. Well, 
that gold is looking good. Yeah, I got to clean it up a little bit. Those are definitely, you're getting moody over there with your paint finishes. I know. <laughs> Amy says, I'm seeing you live. Do you not normally see us live, Amy? Well, I guess you wouldn't want to see us dead. That's what my mom always says. She thinks that's a big funny one. So I just brought back some of this gold underneath the French millinery, and then I'm going to white wax it. And I think this one is done. Might come back and do another coat on this wax once it's cured up a little bit on the golds. I will, as always, once we get everything painted, which is probably gonna take me the rest of the day, um, I will do a little short video on Facebook and YouTube so that way you guys can see all of the finished products. If you want to buy these projects or products, visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Are you gonna show them that up close? Yep. All right, I will wait. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna walk and buff. Walk and buff, multitask. Yep. Oops, I got some gold down there. I don't want that there. Gold, what are you doing? What are you doing to me, gold? How tall are the candlesticks? They're pretty tall. I'd say 18 inches to 20. That's a guess. I have a measuring tape. Zep's right. candlesticks are 21 inches. My candlestick is 14 inches. All right, that's very dark on camera right now. I'm going to clean these feet up. We'll do another coat and straighten it out. Um, we got that ledge too. But they're coming along. They need some cleanup and some touch up and more gold, but. They're fun. I think they'd be cute in the fall with like pumpkins on them. All right. Bye, you guys. We're really leaving now. We're headed over to business coaching. All right. Catch you guys later.